Hi, I'm Muriel Simbro uh, of Idaho right now. Previously was in California most of my life. Um, I'm 85 years old and uh, world champion of 1962. And uh, I never started jumping until after my husband had made 40 jumps from our airplane, which I flew him over the drop zone and said goodbye, baby, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, he was so excited all the time about uh, jumping and you know, talking about the guys, how neat they were, and who this did this with him. And so I just got so enthused that I thought, well, I would try it, maybe. So anyway, come to find out, my my husband's mother paid for my first jump, and uh, she was, was so excited. How much was it? I think it was uh, three fifty. Three dollars. Yes, three dollars and fifty cents. And uh, they put me in a thirty-two foot cargo chute, and uh, seemed like I stayed up there for hours. But it wasn't but about ten minutes, you know. And I told him, I said, maybe you better shoot me down. And uh, anyway, it was fun. I really enjoyed that. I got to listen to everybody on the ground from up there. It was so quiet. And the air is just so still and so beautiful, you know. And when I got out, um, well, before I went to the airport, this lovely guy, Monty McRae, he uh, trained me, gave me all my ground jump ideas and falling. And um, he put me out on my first jump, uh, and it was just great. That was in... Um, 9-11-60, almost a hundred years ago, seems like, <laughs> but it wasn't. But anyway, um, it was uh, very exciting, and I, I thought, man, this is really great. You know, I've got to do it some more. And I took uh, leave of my senses, and my husband and I went to the war surplus store in San Sepulveda, and we bought a crate of parachutes and they were t white ten dollars a piece for the crate of six <laughs> he had three and I had three and uh, so anyway we had the whole rigs put together and um, we started jumping together and uh, I uh, I made five static jumps and on my sixth jump I uh, just started doing everything that nobody thought to do when you're on your first free fall. And like I, oh, well, I did a couple of turns and flat turns too. And nobody could, Hank just was surprised. He said, what's she doing up there? And it was so funny. But anyway, that's the way it started. But I had watched him do so much, you know, that it helped me. And uh, it's... Yeah, on my 14th jump, we went to Hammett for a competition. And uh, anyway, I went up in this Twin Beach, I think it was, or, or uh, Otter, something like that. Can't remember. But anyway, uh, there was nine of us in the aircraft. And uh, I was sitting right by the door. And all of a sudden, we got up to almost 2,000 feet and being a pilot, I felt something happening in the aircraft, and all of a sudden, smoke started coming out of the cockpit, and the pilot turned around and said, everybody's got to get out of here, you know, and there was smoke coming out into the cabin. So anyway, here everybody starts turning up and running out right past me. They didn't say, hey, Muriel, go. No, it was, chivalry was out the door before I even got out of my seat. <laughs> and, uh, and when I went out, you know, they had all grabbed the air, you know. And I had a Mae West. And um, Which is what? that's when the lines go over the middle of the, looks like a bra. And uh, anyway, I just pulled my reserve and it fell right to my feet and I gave it a kick and it blossomed and everything, my main lines came right off the plane, the main chute. And it was there I was, the two beautiful 
<laughs> shoots out there. So anyway, and I still had hanging on to both rip cords. I had a, well, one in each hand, <laughs> guiding my shoot, and I landed right near near the where everybody was parked. And uh, anyway, everybody come over and says, "Are you okay?" Yes, yeah. But anyway, uh, I don't know who put my name in for the Caterpillar Club, but I have this cute little pin here and a certificate and anyway that was great but that was uh, we went ahead and finished the jump uh, another run and I, I took first place so there wasn't many women jumpers then what was your D license? and uh, well I had a C license first 300 and uh, Howard Kurt Curtis signed my logbook off for that 300 jump and uh it was uh, just fabulous, you know. But um, um, I worked very hard trying to get enough jumps to get more experience. And finally, you know, we just buckled down after all the meets that we went to, and we heard that they were having a national tryouts in Kansas, Olathe, Kansas. So we decided we better try to make that if we wanted to further the sport any. So we did, we worked very hard. We tried our series and, and accuracy and we got real proficient, you know, and so we put in for the trip to go to Kansas. And uh, I had to have at least 200 jumps, I figured, to qualify for the big meet, you know. And uh, anyway, I worked crazy. I did eight jumps in one day to get my 200. And uh, we called Gumby up in Livermore, and he said, um, well, you got your water jump, your night jump, and your target jumps. He says, why don't you guys come on up? So my husband and I and my daughters went up, and uh, we had a banquet, and they ordered me uh, my D78 license, the first woman, and it was just a thrill, I'll tell you. It was just great. But um, then we came back home, and uh, we uh, waited and waited, and then we went to Kansas, and uh, we did a couple of practice jumps the morning before the meet started. And then during the meet, uh, the wind came up, on my first jump, I jumped out and I was just right over the target and the wind slapped me right against the gravel, pea gravel there around the target, you know, and cracked my ankle. And that was the end of my jumping for that meet. And uh, anyway, I went to the hospital, they put a cast on me and I came back to the airport. And uh, I had everybody sign my cast. <laughs> and. Uh, Anyway, when they had the banquet that night to award who was going to be on the team, uh, they selected the jump team for the U.S. beat in uh, Orange. And uh, they nominated me for captain and mother of the crew of girls. And uh, it was great. And then they, Hank made alternate. He was a good jumper, real accurate learned a style, it was beautiful to watch him. And um, anyway, we uh, came back home and uh, we uh, sold everything we could. We sold our home so we could further the sport and our freezer and just turned our car little, we had a little car and we turned that in, got a station wagon to carry our six parachutes and uh, I dyed all my parachutes and cut them out and modified them and and uh, I had a double a U T U. I had cut too much out, you know. I couldn't stay up as long as the guys or the <laughs> meats would never get over. But anyway, uh, I had them all colored. I dyed them in the bathtub. I had a pink and a purple and a green and. Uh, they, were really, they could be spotted anywhere in the sky. And then everybody had the orange and white or some other colors too. But 
anyway, it was great. And then I wore red gloves and red boots. And uh, every time we'd come home from jumping, my uh, Hank made a little parachute wire, parachute uh, branding iron, and he branded my boots every weekend when he'd come home. He'd, he'd brand uh, how many jumps I made that day, you know, or the weekend, and uh, I had 200 on my boots. And when I broke my ankle, I don't know whatever happened to those boots, you know? It was crazy. They disappeared. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, after we came home from the meet, you know, we went to, well, we went to Orange for the Nash, the tryouts, so, I mean, for the video, uh, uh, the Olympics, and uh, we had, uh, just a great time with so many country people all over the world, you know, that just 26 countries. That was the first world meet ever in, held in the United States. And um, anyway, you know, I was enjoying my jumping with all the girls. And uh, being, uh, trying to bring myself up and keep going up the ladder to be, you know, number one, never entered my mind. You know, I was just jumping, just to, I enjoyed it, you know. And uh, Hank was watching the, the meter board, you know, let you know how you're coming up. Yeah, and uh, anyway, uh, he, every time I'd land and a couple of jumps later, different events, he would say, hey, you're really coming up the ladder. And I said, what do you mean by coming up the ladder, you know. Anyway, he says, oh, your points are up higher, higher, you know. And anyway, there's a picture of me and him in front of the tent, and we're hugging each other. And he told me then, he says, you made it, babe, you made it. <laughs> and, you know, it was a, a moment of, you know, success and honor and everything. Because uh, here I beat every all the country, and it was just outstanding, you know, I wasn't, I was trying, but I wasn't, you know, over exuberant about being, giving it my all. I was just having a good time. But anyway, we used to jump together all the time. And uh, we, when we sold our freezer, we bought a block of 200 jumps and gave that money to our pilot out in Piru. And anytime there was a vacant seat in the plane, not enough of jumpers, you know, or just maybe two, and they needed one more to make a load, well, one of us would go. And then we would work our series, you know, and practice, practice, practice. And uh, it, it was, uh, you know, we, we, we did everything together. We, we kissed a lot in the, <laughs> in the air. And we'd come together, and this one morning it was, we were up at Taft, and it was really a beautiful, clear day. And we went up to 12.5, and it was so cold. And we started to come together, and my hands felt just like they were going to break off if he touched them, you know. And I said, no, no, no. And I went like this, grabbed my feet, you know. <laughs> so I turned around, and, and he took hold of my ankles, you know. And we fell that way for a while, you know until we got down to where it was warmer, you know, and then we turned around. And, and uh, it was just so much fun, you know. We, we did, uh, I don't know, we hold hands together, you know, with the guys, you know, and it, it, we were always jumping together, no matter what. Talk about getting Jesse in with it. Oh, yeah. After we came back from the Olympics, uh, well, Jesse, our, our oldest girl, she uh, she was, and Jamie, my her sister, that's middle, she's the youngest. Uh, <clears throat> we went to uh, the field, and she would be out there watching the jumpers, you know, and they'd come down, and she'd say, uh, you know, you guys, you did something wrong, you know, and they said, what do you mean? And she says, well, you just didn't do whatever you, they were doing, you know. And she said, you need to work on it, you know. And uh, she had watched Hank and I jump and go home and we'd talk and the kids were right there all the time. And uh, 
Anyway, they would say before they go up, Jesse, watch me and tell me what I did wrong, you know, when I get down. And she'd do that. And then they would jump through the, and land and walk through their lines or whatever. And she'd untangle them for them. She'd put them on the packing table and, Jesse, you know. And she'd get over there and undo them. And so when we came back in the world meet, we told her, you know, we'd like to see if you could jump, you know, if you wanted to. And she was a left-handed gal. And uh, anyway, she said, sure, I'll do it. Well, she did her first jump, and Lyle Cameron was on the wing, strut, taking movies of her, and she was kind of nervous. And uh, I was with her and potted the load, and Hank was on the ground to wait there for her. And um, we had a sentinel on her, her reserve. And uh, anyway, uh, she made her jump. And she said, well, it's, it was okay, Mom, you know. And I said, well, you, we'll put you up again, you know. So she made 13 jumps. And uh, she just was not ready to develop into a jumper. She was too young, I think. Mom, I'm too young to die, you know, she'd say that. And I said, well, you're not going to die, you know. She, anyway, she said, do I have to do it anymore? And I said, no. I said, what you've done is enough, you know, if that's what you want to quit, okay. So then Jamie, our next daughter, youngest at that time, never wanted, well, she was eight years old, ten years old, and uh, everybody asked her if she ever thought she'd thought to jump. <laughs> no, no, I'll stay on the ground. So anyway, today she's going to go out with us, the four of us, Jenny, my youngest daughter, and Jamie, and my granddaughter, Jenny's daughter, and me. And we're gonna try to get the jump masters to give us a four-way, <laughs> make us all four come together, at least facing each other. So anyway, it's uh, gonna be good. But Jenny here, my youngest daughter, she, <clears throat> I was pregnant at the time and didn't know it, and I was training to go to Germany, and uh, it was not too swift. Uh, a time because Hank had already taken three months off from Kodak and they wouldn't give him any more time off and I wanted to go and he wanted me to go but he didn't want me to go alone so anyway the Lord worked in our our lives enough to give us a, another daughter and now she's our joy and uh, anyway she uh, she was has nine jumps I was pregnant with so she counts that as part of her jumping, and she's a, what do you call a real tandem girl. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we live in, we live in Idaho, or I live in Idaho now, and we, Hank passed away in 10, January 10. And uh, anyway, he was so proud of all of our girls, you know, that we had, such, we have a wonderful family. No arguing, no nothing. You know, we just love each other. Do everything together still. Give it a try. Well, if they're that far along that they have seen what uh, it looks like from down here, uh, they should try it before they make up their minds because uh, it can go either way, that whether they like it or they don't like it, or they're scared or they're not scared, you know. But Or just take a ride up and watch them go out. You know, because uh, it's it's not a a personal influence of somebody else telling you, oh yeah, sure, go ahead, do it. You know, you'll like it. You know, you don't do that. I don't think. You know, you have to tell them that how you enjoyed it, the rush that it gives you, and the feeling of being free, and your mind is just clear of everything that's on that's any been bothering you all week long and <laughs> you know your work or your house or kids or whatever because it's all you and your parachute